call the cops on me On a mission to be champs since they let me free Prepare for combat, my adversaries crumble Fakes it, I got a reputation for damage Busters get ready to rumble They lock me in a cell Have me trapped in a living hell Though not guilty, I'm still in jail Brother, I serve my time like a soldier Maintain composure My shadow box in the fight to the death Busting boulders Every boxer with a pair of gloves Best give up love Here's a man from the makings of a thug A lethal weapon, my sharp And in my heart, there's a wish To shake the bread with the flurry of my black fist Now once a high school dropout Welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, this is the Cheap Seats Boxing Show. This is half of the dynamic duo. This is JP. Angelo, we, it will be with you shortly. We had to split it up. Um, first and foremost, thank you for your support. Um, follow us on our various platforms that we're on. iTunes, Windows Phone, iPadio, Podomatic, Stitcher, uh, YouTube, um, Contact us and talk to us on Twitter because we like talking that trash to y'all. Um, follow us on Zoom. You follow us on PlayStation Xbox here. We'll, just follow us. You know. Um, and also email us, cheap, cheap seats. Um, all, now, we just got to get into it. I like to try to, you know, just get right into it. First things first, before we get to the fights, salute. To Juan Manuel Marquez for retiring. You know, you had a heck of a career. Wish you nothing but the best. You've had you had some great moments. You had some low moments. You had some comebacks. Um, very very respectable guy. Very respectable guy. He will be in the Hall of Fame shortly. It won't take that long. You know. Uh, uh, congratulations. We're happy for you. Um, the person, that we, uh, the other person that I didn't get a chance to salute last week, even though we talked about him a little bit because I was just going off about it, Timothy Bradley. Salute to you too. You know, Hall of Fame, very respectable. We have much respect for you. Uh, great fight, great fighter of the, of the era, another great fighter of the era. So, uh, Wish you nothing but the best. You know, wish you nothing but the best. Um, also, there's a salute to Tevin Farmer. You're a hero. You, you're a real hero. Um, he had got shot a couple of weeks back, um, stopping a gunman from shooting at a, at a, ch- a children's party. I wish you a speedy and, and, and well and a quick recovery and hope you'll be back to 100%. I uh, hope your story ends with a great ending, just like Kell Brook and, 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 and Million Dollar Crawler, um, so you can get it off the muscle one more time and get that championship belt around your way. So salute to you also. So now let's get to the fights. Um, of course, first and foremost, we're talking about Lomachenko just toying with Mariaga. You know, which can't get mad at him. I mean, he showed up. He showed out. He did his thing. He dominated the fight. He controlled the fight. You know, he he took the head butt like a, like a champion and said, okay, so you're going to do like that to me? I'm, I'm going to make an example out of it. He bullied him around. You know, um, had him all discombobulated on, on the defensive you know, even when he was just throwing a pity pat jab out there to fill him out to hit him with something major, like he was really, really toying with him, like really. And and at the same time, you know, entertaining. And I'm like, you're a bully in that ring, and I don't, I'm not mad at you. You know, um, I was kind of upset at the crowd, you know, because it was weird because. I guess we're in a different era. The corner thing, the Roy Jones thing, that was exciting in that Roy era. And people got out of people getting, people making those stances in the ring and entertaining and boxing like that. People start acting like that is like just too over the top and showboating. But I guess if they like you, it's cool because when Lomachenko did it, it was okay, it was cool. When Roy did it back in that day, it was cool. But I think people were just 
too sensitive, like in a combat sport. Um, same thing with with the tapping them on the head. Like maybe about a month ago, a month, a month and a half, two months, it was kind of talking greasy about Terrence Crawford for doing it. I'm like, yeah, look, man, you know, but that was the ref. Like the ref, you know, that's a different referee from that was fight net fight because it's just it's just really just just ex- exuding dominance over your competition when you're doing something like that. Me personally, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's all fun part of the sport. I think if you in a boxing ring and you getting dominated like that, your job is to do something about it. So Mariaga just couldn't do nothing about it. I mean, let's be real. He just got pumped. Um, another dominating, exciting performance. I will say that. He showed a little power with the knockdowns. That's that's actually what's kind of been missing from his game recently. Because I would say, you know, with him and Rigo, I would still say Rigo was the harder puncher from what I saw recently because it just looked like Rigo hits harder. He has his 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 shots have more bad intentions on him. And I would say Mikey hits harder. You know, just the way it looks. You know, but by the way he finishes people over time, but you got to give it to him. Lomachenko is a bad man. Bad man. Question is, who's next? Between uh, Rigo and um, and Mikey. Because Mikey fired back saying, you know, um, he didn't see anything impressive about Lomachenko. And I can understand that to a degree because um, you're, being, you're just shooting back at him for one. And... Though he has had great performances, then it's not really an asterisk by him. It's just when you if you look at the ins and outs of the fight, it's not it's always something missing. Mariaga, people probably don't feel like he, he had a fight of a year loss, but it was still a loss. So he's coming off a loss. Um you know, your confidence is usually not sky high and you're not feeling yourself like that. It's not about you the 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 O on your record or or it's just about the winning mentality and the confident mentality because once you rebuild that even if you had a loss you're hell to deal with to get a guy in a great who had a great fight off of a loss is it's you know it's a mixed bag is some some people say it's okay because it's a tough opponent some people like eh, maybe you should have got the winner of that fight um the other thing, you know, even with the Walters fight, the layoff, which Walters will be back fighting soon, which says something about top rank, but we'll, t- we'll handle that when it comes. Um, the layoff, like, so you got a, a great opponent who just was laid off, was on the shelf for so long, he wasn't his best self. But you beat him handily, got to give it to you. You know, is is that type of... Your opponents have have had these things with them. It's just not those two, but you know Russell, you dominate. You know Salido got you, but that was early on. But you're a way better fighter now than you were then. Got to give give you credit and give that to you. So the question is, which direction do you go? Do you go? Do you stay where you're at and Rigo comes up, or do you go up to get Mikey? Like what what's going on? Because now um, that's going to be all people want to know. Like, you got two choices, either up or down. Like, it's, it's, it's really no um, no in between with that at all, to be perfectly honest. Because this is also something you talked up yourself. Um, next fight Beltran. You won. Uh, close fight. You could say draw. I mean, it's, you know, like I said, depend. Like we always say, depending on who's watching and who's feeling a person more, you could say draw, split decision, either way by one point, however you want to call it. But he won. Um, he's been building up his momentum, so you got to give him credit. He, he he's on a roll. And the question. Honestly, is what's next. I would 
probably go the Flanagan crawler route because um, that eliminates it, probably Flanagan more so than crawler at this particular point. If you beat Flanagan, you're in the mix with everybody. Linares, um, Mikey, Easter, you're in there. You're like, can, nobody can deny you. You know, Crawler will probably be a, a good fight for business purposes still, but maybe Flanagan might be the bigger fight, who knows, in the UK rather. But you, but you have to take that fight and be on somebody else's turf and just take this role on the road, which, you know, I would say the winner of your next fight has got to fight for a title. If not your next fight, if you don't fight for a title in your next fight. You know, Easter might, Easter, Linares, even Mikey because he just finished fighting. I mean, you, you got a shot to fight any one of those five opponents. Because I think you like rank, you probably rank sixth, fifth, sixth, you know, maybe seventh. But that depends because the, the, the Ricky Hatton's fighter is in, is in that mix too. I cannot pronounce your name, bro. It's Dijon. I cannot pronounce the last name. I'm sorry. But I think everybody will be wondering about what's next. But congratulations to you on your victory. I hope, you know, you keep the ball rolling and, and, and keep it popping, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, how can I say? I want to skip down a little bit because uh, Esquiva Falcoa. You know, last year we did a fight. We went to a fight in Houston on the card, the Mike Alvarado card with the baby bull. And Falcor was on the undercard. And I spoke about him then. I said, this dude can fight. He can really fight. And I was like, you watch out for him. He's coming. He, he's almost there. Like, real talk, he's almost there. And what's going to wind up happening is, is I'm sure fighters... I think at 160, it was 160, 154, I forget which one it is. Uh, you know, they're going to, if they sleep on them, they're going to get caught. Because, I think he's 160. Because if he, because in that division right now, every, it's stacked. So, to me, I mean, he could go down to 54, and maybe wreck some havoc, you know. Or he could stay at 60 and just work his way up to the top because he's going to be a problem. Dude can fight, man. Dude, he's got a good skill a good skill set. And sometimes we take that for granted. But I think with this guy, just remember the name. That's all I'm going to tell you. Just remember the name. You 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 won't be um, you won't be disappointed in his ability. From my from my opinion, right now, you know. Next, you got to give a big up to Clarissa Shields. I mean, fifth round KO. I think you know she's gonna in some ways bring female boxing back. She's one of the pieces to bring female boxing back to. Uh, Ann Wolf, uh, Layla Ali, you know, those days like when people didn't want to, people weren't paying attention. People had to pay attention though. Um, I like her. I like, I think she's cool. She's cool for the sport, you know, to get other women involved and she could fight. Do most guys like to see women fight? Not necessarily, but I mean, if a girl wants to grow up and be a fighter, you got you got to give her her props. Like she's moving and moving at light speed and actually handling her business. So you got to tip your hat to her. Like she, that, congratulations to you. You're the real deal. You're the real deal. Keep it up. Um, Mauricio Herrera beat Soto Carras. Ten round close fight. Um, don't know how to take it because. 
I don't know. I mean, it's it's hard to say where these guys gonna go. Because you know, Mauricio is just a tough guy to fight for anybody, just because of his awkwardness, you know. So it, you can say he lost a step, and so the Carras lost a step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's understandable. But where do I don't know where's his mix? Maybe maybe he fights Berto next. You know, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's a Broner fight. I don't know. Like. I mean, maybe the rematch, you know, with Danny. I don't, I, winning is winning. So wherever you go, that's your business, you know. Um, I'm, I'm more partial to saying, you know, wherever, get in where you fit in right now. As long as you're on a roll winning, do that. Just keep winning. So, Congratulations to you on that. Close fight, though. Close fight, though. You know, let's be real. Close fight. Uh, now, I'm going to touch into something. Because see, Angelo don't want to talk about the um, the Mayweather-McGregor stuff. I do. So, I will. Um... I've been I've been peeping the, the 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 talks about it, and this is why I'm gonna take this particular time out to do it right now. I'm gonna say why I like it, why I dislike it, why I think it's good for the sport, why I think not so good for the sport. Okay, the reason I like it is because this is an opportunity for MMA fans to get what they've been asking for. You watch MMA, they call it striking, and oh, this guy's a great striker. Most people that are boxing fans are like, yeah, the guy can punch, but can he punch like a boxer? No. He doesn't have that skill set. He could punch in a street fight style, but not in a boxing ring. But most MMA fans think, oh, if you get caught, blah, blah, blah. This is a, this is a, a prime example to show you you know, it's not a, don't 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 do this. You know, this this is a good example for boxing to shut up MMA when it comes to fighting with your hands. Um, plus, you're dealing with a 40 year old fighter versus a 28 year old fighter. So, though Floyd is one of the greatest to ever do it, he's 40. You would say, McGregor's in his prime. He's 28. So if a 40-year-old whips, beats the brakes off a 28-year-old, now it's nothing else you can say. There's no question. Just like when James Tony got in the ring with uh, Randy Couture and he took him to the ground and tapped him out, just like that. Everybody Okay. Okay, you can't bring that box. That was uh, ground. That was wrestling, grappling, jujitsu, whatever you want to call it. It wasn't with the hands. Everybody knew how it would end if they used the hands. So now this is a situation that's forcing the use of hand-to-hand combat. Why I don't like it. Let's be honest about this. It's a, it's, it's a fantasy matchup. But we're talking about one of the greatest boxers of all time versus a guy who may have had 25 amateur fights before um, he was in the MMA. So you're really talking about an amateur fighter. One of the greatest of all time versus an amateur fighter who feels like I can land a punch. I think that's very silly, disingenuous, and disrespectful. For the fans in general to think, I mean, this this guy could do something that Manny Pacquiao couldn't do, that Andre Berto couldn't do, Miguel Cotto couldn't do, Shane Mosley couldn't do, Canelo Alvarez couldn't do, uh, 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 Diego Cor- Corrales couldn't do, Chop Chop Corley, Zab Judah. I mean, really? 
Juan Manuel Marquez. I mean, we go the list. The, the list of champions is a long list. Shamba Mitchell. Look, y'all had to bring out Shamba Mitchell. You know, uh, Emmanuel Augustus. Like, come on, like. It, it, it makes no sense. You think Conor McGregor is better than all of them? Really? Some of them in a prime. Arturo Gotti. He's better. No, he's not. You know, all this is. You know, this is why one of the reasons. You know, as as far as promotion wise, I like it because it promotes the fantasy well and. Floyd showed up to promote and talk trash because this is what, what makes fights sell nowadays, a lot of trash talking. He made he sells the fight with his trash talking. Conor McGregor sells the fight with his trash talking. You know, I think that's good for, the, for, for, for future fighters to understand. You're going to have to sometimes go the extra mile. But the problem with that sometimes is this. Fighters don't like, the fighter who has to do the most trash talking is the one that's promoting the fight. So he's actually working double time. While he's training for the fight, he's also promoting the fight simultaneously. So you got to understand something. When you see two fighters and one of them is acting all people, people r- ridiculous, boisterous, arrogant, over the top, that's the fighter who's working double time to sell the fight. And, yeah, they may rub people the wrong way, but that's the person getting you to tune into the fight because either you want to see this person um, back up what they talked or you want to see them get beat, get the brakes beat off of them for talking so much. So the, normally one fighter talks, the other fighter's just quiet. So McGregor actually, he brings it. He brought it in the promotional aspect. He very much so brought it. So... I think it's, that's great for the sport to see that, you know, you don't have to be the best fighter to be the best promoter. So some of you guys are going to have to, you know, step up your your PR because um, if you don't, when y'all looking for the big fights and the big money, part of that is you promoting yourself. And sometimes, you know, that's just not your personality. I get it. You know, but you might have to do something that catches people's attention that is your personality, though. You know, like, coolest thing right now is the night-night pillow to me. <laughs> that night-night pillow is off the chain, you know. That's that's how Shannon Briggs got everybody's attention, you know. Let's go, champ! W- regardless of, you know, how that situation ended recently. But you got to admit, he promoted the heck out of his, himself, you know. Brandon, like Deontay Wilder with the Bomb Squad brand. You hear Bomb Squad everywhere. When people go around, they go, Bomb Squad. It, 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 you know who's coming. You get what I'm saying? So I think it's great. I, I think that part of it makes it great. Um, the part about the promo that I, that I don't like, but it's just part of combat sports and boxing it's always a race war. Always, we talk about this, but that's what—that's basically what this fight is. And Floyd capitalizes on it, just like Conor capitalizes on it. All this fight is, at the end of the day, is a great white hype. That's it. You know, because it, as far as fighting goes, that you got you got uh, Floyd Mayweather capitalizing on being on the A side because if I beat enough opponents. They'll find a great white hype and they'll hype this fool up and pay me. And that's what they did. And Conor McGregor's like, if I can get in the spot of being a great white hype, really doesn't matter if I win or lose because I'm going to make a fortune. And that's what Conor McGregor's at, you know? So this fight does what most fights do. It takes advantage of people's prejudices, biases, racism, and insecurities and everybody wants to be on whatever team so if that's what we're doing that's what we're doing but for people to act like that's not what it is i think that's quite disingenuous um because that's exactly what it is the the other thing i kind of that that i do like 
is no matter how you slice it, it brings casual fans to the sport. And I think it's great timing because think about it. We've had great fights this year, but they're kind of underrated. And great matchups, but they're kind of underrated. But this fight comes at a perfect time. You got uh, you got Mikey fighting last week. Great fight. You got Lomachenko fighting well, two weeks ago. Then you got Lomachenko fighting. Um, you had War fighting recently. Um, you got the, you got the Triple G Canelo fight after that. So if this fight lives up, it just creates enough hype. And Floyd actually shows up to get this guy out of here, and he, he gives him a, the kind of beating he gave, like Gotti. And I don't, I, I know I didn't want to say that because God bless the dead, you know. But if or or or, or, or he knocks him out, a la Hatton. How about that? Then it gets people excited about boxing. And what will they do if they're excited about boxing? Now they'll. They're like, man, that was a good fight, you know. A, but he was a novice; he wasn't ready. What if we see some real fighters? So next, the, the week after, you're gonna tune into uh, Canelo Triple G. Great matchup, great fight. So, you know, if this, if it's, if it all works out fine, boxing will win at the end of the day. And I think boxing is winning. I think one one problem that people are not people do have is sometimes Floyd Mayweather overshadows boxing. And for me, that's okay, because he earned that spot. You know, um, he's bigger than boxing. He beat boxing. Uh, just like if by some, you know, he wins the fight, oh boy's a novice. You know, if he loses the fight, Conor McGregor's the best boxer who ever lived, one and all. You know what I'm saying? He's undefeated, right? Um, but but that would be a pressure that Conor McGregor wouldn't want because then you have to follow that up by beating an actual another boxer and probably one in their prime. But I do not see that happening at all. You know, I'm just just putting it out there. Um, the thing about it is for the other boxers though, this actually, in my opinion, it clears the way for you guys to become superstars because. Even though Floyd is cashing out, and he already cashed out before, but this motherfucker cashing out again, so can't get mad at you for cashing out and cashing out numerous times. Can't get mad at that. But what he did was, he's cashing out with an MMA fighter. So you can always say, look, man, he done fought all of boxers. Now he went to the, he, 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 he even did WrestleMania, and now he's fighting an MMA fighter. He's really done... He's a great attraction for the sport to get us restarted and rejuvenated, but he's moved on. He's out of here. Now we are the young talent, and that's what I got to, uh, with Tank being on the undercard, that's like a perfect setup. You know what I'm saying? It's really a perfect setup, and I got to give credit what credit is due with that. Um, so to me, even on the other side of that, with, with Oscar, chill out. Like, chill out. Like, because if you played, if you if you really start being a hater, and I get it, you you know, because it's more of a spectacle than a fight, you can capitalize off of this. But you too in your feelings. You know? If 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 if, if Floyd's gonna capitalize off of it with his promotional company. Uh, Al Heyman is going to capitalize off of it. The PBC is going to capitalize off of it. And you and you have one of the biggest fights of the year a week later. You can capitalize off of it too. Just stop tripping. Like just, you know what, promote the fight just like everybody else. And say, look, man, when that's over with, be at the fight. Show your fighters at the fight. Triple G show up to the fight. You know, be smart about this. Like be ringside, like... Cheering all yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the announcers will do it for you. And these guys right here who have the camera on, you know, Canelo Alvarez, he's going to be in one of the biggest boxing matches of the year next week. And this guy, Gennady Golovkin, Triple G, he's a beast too. 
you 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 if, if this sells like it's, they say it's gonna sell, you go, gonna at least have who upward of two, three, four, five, six million people watching. Perfect opportunity to to actually put your fighters in prime position because I can guarantee you if Javante Davis shows up that night and handles business, he's gonna be a superstar just like that. Just like that, because he's been putting people out excitement. He's a young fighter. He's a hungry lion. That's a perfect, that's a springboard opportunity. Um, and I think you should just take advantage of it. I, I hope everybody does. So this is my half of this. Angela will be with you shortly, ladies and gentlemen. So y'all have a good one. This is where the fighters fight and the fans commentate. And we do it like that. We do it just like that from the cheap seats because we ain't buying no tickets, goddammit. Peace. Again, I'll be the next heavyweight